Yo, what's up? All praise you to the Most High, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. Yo, this Joe Crizzle, y'all. Check this out. Um, I'm in Bitwig, uh, 2.5. And uh, I'm mixing one of my, uh, my mixing and mastering one of my beats. So I was going to take y'all through the process of it. I'm doing like a little touch-ups. And um, maybe y'all can learn something from it, you know. Uh, remember, when it comes to mixing and mastering, uh, once you learn the basics, it's, it's never really no, it's no rules how things should go. The reason why is that Every song has a different approach. Even an artist, when they're doing two different type of songs, it's a different approach. So, uh, this beat was pretty easy, you ask me. I'm going to play it back a little bit. And I hope they don't block this off the page. I don't know if y'all know that uh, uh, Some people know Some people don't But when I mix I mix in mono So this part right here The tool I normally have this right here And then once I export it out For mastering uh, uh, I bring it back to width You know To see How it sounds So If you can get a good mix in mono Then your mix will come out good once you put it back in stereo. And I love about Bitwig is that you could just turn this, you know, you could just turn the knob and, and put everything on mono because this is the mastering track. This right here is just my meter, a VSC meter that I download. Um, as you can see, let me see. So, so, so basically what I did I didn't do too much mixing and mastering, uh, putting a lot of EQs and compressions and everything on this specific track. The reason why is because when you get a lot of drum kits, a lot of drum kits already been mixed and mastered. Yes, when you go online and you buy a lot of them. They all mix and master. They got a lot of punch to them. They already cleaned up, crispy, boom, bat. The only reason why you need to change something or tweak something if based on how when you make a beat, what instruments you put together. And uh, so sometimes this is, you know, you have you have to tweak something to because something might have too much or you might have too many sounds and you have to tweak something a certain way. But when everything is already playing pretty good, it's not too much you need to do. Like on the crash, I just put a delay on the crash. I'll, I'll let you hear that right quick. Let me open up this mixer uh, right here. So, let me turn this. So, as you see, I got a delay. And the delay is on the crash part right here. It's not spectacular. This is what I did. <laughs> If I turn it off, that's how I sound without it. Turn it back on. Got like some type of organic robotic type feel. And then I put a delay on the bells right here. So if I go right here and press that. Get like a little rhythm. But I'm going to play both bells together. And 
Now without it, without the uh, delay, this our sound. Yeah, what's up? Come here, come here. What's up? I can't hear anything. Give me a second, y'all. You got kids around here. <laughs> Um, let's call it back. Hold on, my bad. I want to see if they pop up. Try one more time because I'm in a video. If they call back, I'll let you know. Give me a second. All right. All right, close that door back. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry about that. I was going to stop the recording, but hey, sometimes you want to, you know, see the real reality. Hold on right quick. Let's go this. Hello? Hello? Hold on right quick. Hold on right quick. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry about that. All right, so I put the uh, I put a delay on the bells. Um, I ran some reverb on from from the sand effect. Did I put a delay on there? I put a I put a um. Okay, yeah. If you go, which one I put on there? The side chain. I side changed the reverb. I'm gonna play this back. Now, if y'all know what side chain side chain mean, that if 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 hold on, if right here, if I turn this off, this how it would sound the reverb. Play it back. So when I turn it back on, it basically it basically controlled the uh the reverb a little more, you know. So when the sound says something, the reverb kind of, you know, you know, come the volume come down, and then once the sound go away, then the the reverb come up. That's 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 very helpful when you doing uh putting certain delays and certain effects on vocals or you know different instruments and stuff. So that's what I did. I side changed the reverb and this is the reverb right here. Play that back. Love you. I put it on here. Nah, I put side chain on this too. Love you. 
Y'all also put it on here too. So now let me on solo this one and play this sample back right here. And this is how it sound without the sound without the sound chain. That's how I sound with it without it. I'm turn it on. Play that back. So you, you can really hear it. You see that? It, it sound cool, but it don't sound more controlled and more clearer. <clears throat> Turn it back on. Sound much better. Don't y'all agree? All right. Now, so I really didn't do too much with this beat, you know. Um, I put I, I I got a filter on the send. I got a filter. Normally I put a have an EQ or two band EQ, and what I do sometimes I send you know a filter that roll off the bass to certain sounds like the clap. You know I send the uh, low pass to it, the low pass to this one, the low pass to this one, the bass drum, and you know, and it was all about just leveling it, level. I mean, level your uh your tracks and 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 pan it right and get everything to fit good. Now, but this is a trick that I don't know if a lot of people know, but I've been doing it for years, and everybody know that master. They know that you want to give the master level right here headroom. And the average headroom, I say around 5, 6, 7 dB, something like that. You want to give it a nice little space so whoever decide to master it, or if you master it, if you know what you're doing, you know, you got more headroom to play with when you decide to boost the, uh, the music up that, uh, that competes with the music that's in the clubs and the radio. But, but some, this is something that a lot of people don't know. So I'm going to give you all this information. So once once I finish mixing, I'm satisfied with it. I listen to it in the cars, the headphones, whatever, all that blah 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 blah, and I play it back. And you know, and what I do, I um, I turn certain stuff. You know, I turn it down until this level right here is at 6 dB around that area, right? So as you can see, when I reset that, it's at 6.2, right? So now I got my, my, my tool back in with. So, but what I would do is that I would turn a limiter on to export out before I master it. Or why? I'm going to tell you why. Because, and I'm going to show you why. But if you notice that the ceiling is at 7 dB, even though the level of the whole song is at 6 dB. So when I export it out, you don't see peaks or you don't see mountains. That's what we call it. We don't see mountains. You see like a flat two stereo, uh, basically like this. I'm going to show you. You see this. If you notice, you see how flat, you see, you see the lines, how they perfect are they? You see how, how perfect they are? Right here, you know, it cuts those frequencies down to keep it more in control before you master. It. Because some stuff be haywire. You don't want that. You want it. You want it. You know, smooth out. Even though I could have, you know, lowered it a little bit more on this one, but it's cool. I still control the frequencies a little bit more. The same. You see it right here. The frequencies is uh, you know, even. It's it's a nice little line. That's what you want. A lot of people don't tell you that, but that's one of the tricks of, you know, the process of before you master. And so I, I, I guess some people do it, some people don't, but I learned from, you know, a long time ago. And really, that makes a big difference. It, con it, it controls your music so much. It's kind of like throwing, you know, a little bit of compression on it a little bit before you, you decide to master it. And it's, all, it's still low. It's still like 6 dB. So I so what I did, 
I export this song out right here. Once I was done, I was satisfied with it. I export it out. And, you know, uh, 24-bit, you know, 24-bit, uh, you know, blah, 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 24-bit, basically. And and then I open up a mastering. Now, on my mastering side, how I got things set up in Bitwig is that as a template, you know, I got one track. And on one track, I got a, you know, a spectral. Um... On the sin, I got a I got a I got an option called mix. Let me go right here. Press this. If you notice on the mix, if you close this, I got a mix track. And on the mix track, I got master one, master two, and master three. Why I got that? Because sometimes I want to do three different or whatever how many different mixes of that beat or song for somebody. You know, I try to get different styles and different feels, you know, stuff like that. Same way I would do it if I was in the uh, the mixing side. Um, sometimes you listen to one, you want to compare it to the other. But with this one, all I needed was one. It, it was sounding good. I was like, fuck it. Don't, don't fix nothing that's not broken. Sometimes we get in a moment where... Oh, I can do it better than that. I can do it better than sometimes you fuck it up. Chill. Listen, we can sit here and be on music all day and critique it and make it to the best ability possible. And and five years from now, you'll be like, damn, I, I should have changed something. Prime example, when Havoc for, uh, from Mob Deep, you know, uh, he a producer, when he made Quiet Storm, they asked him, what would you change about Quiet Storm? He said, I would have made the bass a little harder. You get what I'm saying? But when we listen to that beat, we love it. It's dope. To this day, you play the record, it's dope. But he could have made it beat. He said he could, I, I wanted to make the bass harder. So don't, you know, if, if it's not broken, you know, don't fix it. Just leave it what it is. If it sounds good, let it be. You know, unless you got time to go back later and, and do a different mix or something like that. But time is money. And, um, you know, but it's something that you got to enjoy. But anyway... I on on the master track as you can see on my preset I got a I got a meter I have a a, a peak limiter right um, but before but before when before I start mastering I turn this this is off so I didn't really had to do too much with this, this part and um as you can see you go to master one I got a chain go to master two got a chain go to master three I have a chain. These two is turn off. And so on one, you press right here, you open it up. The first thing I did was roll a little bit of the uh let me turn this off. This yo man, this is the best damn I'm gonna play it back with everything going first. And I So when I turn this on, all I did is roll a little bass off because there's certain frequencies that you really can't hear, you know, and you, you roll a little highs off, to, you know, to make it sound a little softer. The more highs you roll off, the more softer it sound. Sometimes you don't want to push up too much highs on the, uh, on the overall track because it make it sound very too much highs on it. And then, you know, you play it in the car or something, you know, it, 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 it don't sound right, you know, um. But it make it sound warm at the same time. And sometimes you want to roll off certain frequencies of the bass. You don't want to roll too much off. You want to do it like a little bit. Not not doing too much because the mix is already... If you satisfy with the mix and it's great, you know, when it comes to the mastering process, it's not a lot, you know. Uh, but it ain't what you use, it's what you know. And yes, this shit take time, especially when you mixing... Certain artists, based on how many tracks you are mixing and mastering, how many tracks you are mixing, and if you got a time stretch or pitch correct, 
it's a lot of processing when you're doing that type of work. Some jobs is a little easier. Some jobs just take a long time. So, fellas, singers, rappers, look, if you want your shit to sound good, man, you can't be cheap talking about, you know, you know, sometimes it's, you know, some artists not even good. They don't be on beat as good. They think they be on beat. They be off. But, you know, and if they want to be, if they be like, okay, can you make that sound good and put me on beat? Then the engineer got to do a lot of processing and time stretching and cutting and moving things to left to right to put every one of your words on the beat. Even though technically you don't really want to, you want to have it right from the beginning. But not to get off the subject, but yeah, you cut a little bit of this, the bass, you know, the highs to, to your liking. This, this fit me more. This is a basic process, you know, uh, that you want to do with the beat. And uh, now I'm, I'm going to go to the mastering thing, the multi-band three. Oh. And I see, see how I sound when I cut it off? I'm going to cut it back on. So you turn it on, it has more control. It, it, it make it sound as a whole together, but but this is the thing what I love about this uh, multi band more than any multi band that's out in the world. I don't give a damn what you got. There's no multi band that does this. In this multi band, each you got low, mid, and high, and each one of these right here, you can put any plug in that you want to put in, any effect, whatever, and will only affect that specific frequency. Yes. So it just won't be EQ and compression like most multi-band compressors. If I want to put a reverb and I only want the reverb to affect the mid, the reverb will only affect the mid. So what I did in this reverb, I got a regular compressor. I mean, in this multi-band, I got a compressor. I got a tool and I turned the tool all the way to mono. And that's my bass. I want the bass to sit in the middle. So that's what I did. Let me see, let's see if we can really hear it. Hold on. And I If you can hear it But it, it brings it in the middle Just a little tad bit more Give it more control Where it sits in the middle Like a bass drum On a real You know uh, uh, Physical drum machine uh, Now what I did with the mid I add another compressor Add another compressor I'm going to turn this on too and what I did, I put a tool on this one. Now, as a matter of fact, let me move this right here. I want that to be first. And what I did, I put another tool, but in the mid, I pinned the width of it. So let me turn this off. Let me turn it on. So what it do is spread the, the width of the mid. I didn't do the high. I just kept the highs regular with a regular regular compressor. And then after that, I put a little distortion on it. Uh, it gives like an extra, you know, feel. Let's go play this back.
like when it, you know, it give it like the extra whatever. This is just being creative. This is something that you don't have to use. I'm just being creative, and and that's what you know. Being that's a good thing about being creative. Some people do this, some people don't. Put a reverb on the mastering track at the end, and when you put that whole reverb over the whole track and make it sound so much better. I'm gonna play this back without it. Turn the mix up a little bit. See, it, it, it's too much right there. So you just want to give it a little taste based on what re reverb you got. So you just give it a little taste of overall mix And sometimes that reverb uh, Make it just sound big man You know based on what song you using And then what I did on the mastering I put the peak limiter in So I'm going to turn that off and play it back Because remember it set, uh, It's still playing like around 6 dB at this time Before I put the limiter on it And I Turn the limit up. That's basically what I did with this track And When I played it in the car And headphones and earplugs Man it was sounding good man You gotta go by your ears sometimes And And that was that I didn't even have to do it Two different versions To see what sound good uh, Sometimes I have to do more Sometimes I don't But yo this your Krizzle you know, tell me what y'all think. Give me your comments. Give me your honest opinions. Uh, but get out your feelings. Talk like men. Now get on here and sound like a little bitch. Um, but yeah, if it's something that you like to see, subscribe, hit me up. Feel free to hit me up. This is what we do, man. We are here to, to spread the love and the information to all the people in the world, man. It's your Krizzle. Peace.